Hey guys, this is Ben with Tillmore, and today we're going to disassemble a drop box off of a 520 tractor. Um, if you need help or need videos to get it to this point, go back and source them. Um, there is videos to show you how to get it off the tractor. Um, but this one's off, and we're going to tear it apart and show you guys how to do it. So, um, obviously you're going to want to make sure you drain the oil before you do this. If not, you're going to have a big mess. I have done that. It makes a mess. So let's go ahead and let's remove this cover and remove this cover. Um, these are just half inch with a, remove them with a half inch socket. <clears throat> um, these covers are going to be stuck as you can see, we just filmed the assembly video, so my silicone is not dried. But when you guys go to disassemble them, they are going to be a little bit stuck. You may have to take a chisel, screwdriver, and just break that silicone seal apart. So just pop them off, just lay all these to the side. Um, next, what we're gonna wanna do is remove that cotter pin off of the big nut on the end of the spindle. Um, it's gonna be a little challenging, but I feel this is the easiest way for you guys to be able to <clears throat> get this disassembled. So you want to try to get it back straight. That is the goal. So maybe get a pair of pliers and squeeze it. And then just work it out. And I like to take a pair of side cutters like that. And I just kind of pull it out of there like that. And obviously you're gonna need to bend it to get it clear out of there. So you're gonna wanna you're gonna need a new cotter pin when you go to put it back together. So and you if you don't have a new one, you can straighten them and reuse them. Just make sure that it uh, is not compromised when you go to put it back together. Okay, got the cotter pin out, got the covers off. Let's uh, go ahead and remove that big nut. If you watched our assembly video, you're gonna know that it is uh, inch and 13 sixteenths. Take that nut out, and now what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna lay this over on its side and we're gonna press this spindle back out the other way. <clears throat> this is the puller we're gonna use. Um, this is a puller that we've made here at Tillmore. Um, it will be, a little bit, be available to buy. You don't necessarily have to buy it. You can go out to your local hardware store and get any kind of puller you need. Um, our spindle does have a tapered hole in the center, um, so most pullers should work. Um, we'll send bolts with it. You can use those bolts. You can use the shorter bolts. Um, I will say if it is really stuck, I would recommend using these bolts. They're a harder bolt. Um, they're a little better bolt. All right, so let's go ahead and let's put some tension on this so it all stays together when I roll it over. Just kind of lay it on its side. And I got some blocks of wood here. Kind of want to get it blocked up so that spindle, it can slide out and it's not gonna bind. Um, 
kind of hold it. And then basically you're gonna take this threaded bolt and just drive it in and push the spindle out the other side. Just like that. Okay, that is out. Let's set it back up on the spindle protector. Okay, let's get let's get that off of there. Lay that to the side. We will need that again. Um, go ahead and get your washer out of there. <clears throat> and now what we're going to do is remove all these bolts so that we can separate these cases. To remove those, the bolt head is a 5 8 and the nut on the bottom is an 11 16 so go ahead and remove all those. Collect all those. You can reuse these. Um, when you're putting it back together. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to put our puller on here, basically lift this smaller part of the case up. Um, before we do that, let's knock these centering pins out. Um, make sure you're wearing eye protection. Lay those off the side because you will need those. <clears throat> if you watch the assembly video, you'll see that we use these. We're actually going to use these to disassemble as well. And I'm going to use a little smaller one and we're going to actually press down on that bearing as we're picking up on the case with the puller. Once again, run these bolts in, <clears throat> half inch socket. And when you're doing it, make sure that piece of metal or that, that round flat piece is centered in there. Make sure it's not touching the case because then it will not be able to press apart. So we're gonna go ahead and Just like that. Let's go ahead and we'll remove the polar. That way when we separate the cases, pieces don't go flying. Okay, so take your polar, set it off the side. We should be done with that. And then grab your top case, just lay it over here to the side. <clears throat> and now take your flat piece of steel that you're pressing against and lay it off to the side. This here's uh, the top bearing that goes right there on the, on the spindle. Um, obviously you're probably disassembling this because it has a problem. Um, there's potentially going to be a bunch of metal through here. I don't know why you're di disassembling, but when you're checking these, um, one way that I was taught to check them is just basically push your hands this way to put pressure on the bearings and you want to be able to spin that bearing clear around and it should be smooth. If there's any kind of uh, rough spot in it, I recommend replacing that bearing because it's probably compromised. You may, may not be able to see it, but there's probably an issue. If you reassemble it with that bearing, it could cause you to have to tear this thing back apart quicker than you should normally have to. Um, so set all that off to the side. Your big gear just picks up. Once again, when you're taking it apart, you want to inspect these teeth, both sides. Obviously make sure there's no chunks that are broken out of them. Um, if anything's broke, looks damaged, you're gonna wanna replace that gear. 
Here's our spacer. <clears throat> Lay that off to the side. That should be able to be reused unless it's broke. Um, your magnet, you're gonna wanna clean that magnet really well. Make sure that magnet gets back into the case. Um, <clears throat> so these bearings down in here that go, set it so you guys can see it. These bearings are what the, the spindle there slides through. You're gonna take all those out and you're also, you're gonna wanna check those as well. Um, check your races really well, um, but a way you can, you can also push on those, spin them around. But the best way to do it is to get that race out of there and push them together and spin it around and make sure it's smooth. <clears throat> so get rid of those. We will lay this down. And what we're gonna do is drive this uh, gear and bearing assembly apart. Try to get it up onto a piece of wood you may need to do is use taller pieces of wood. But once again, I'm gonna like that and there's the small gear and the two outer bearings once again make sure they're good and smooth um, if they're rough those will need replaced as well uh, now that I've got those all out let's go ahead and take the spindle protector off take that cover off Lay your spindle protector off this side. We'll reuse that. Take that cover and seal off. Once again, your rubber O-ring. Recommend replacing all your seals, all your O-rings when you're going back together with a new one. <clears throat> okay, here's our outer bearing. And now let's go ahead and let's, I'll show you how to, Get these races out and get the snap rings out. That way, if you have to change the whole assembly, you can do that. Go ahead and kind of wipe it down, get all your excess oil off of it. Just makes it cleaner to work with. <clears throat> so you're gonna need to be able to drive these races out the way that you put them in. Um, because there is a double stack of snap rings in there, so you can't just pound here and drive everything out. It's not gonna work. You've got to, if the case is sitting like this, you're gonna wanna drive the inside race out. Then we're gonna flip it and drive the outside race out. <clears throat> so to do that, make sure you have a good square punch. Um, I just have a punch and I put it on the sander and squared it off. So anything will work. And it, once you're looking down in there, you'll be able to find a spot that's a little more open that you can pound on. So you're gonna basically just hit it once there, once there, and just go back and forth. If you try to pound just on one side, it's gonna put the race into a bind and you're gonna have trouble getting it out. So if you hit on one side, go to the opposite, opposite side to hit the next time. Each time should move the race just a little bit. Um, you may want to wear gloves. There are some sharp edges on here. As you can see, I missed the punch one time, but so wear some gloves for, for protection. So that is your inside race. <clears throat> and go ahead and wipe it off. Go ahead and you can inspect that hard coating on the inside of that race. And then take your bearing that is the inside bearing 
and I just like to push them together to make sure there's no rough spots in it. Um, my recommendation though is if you're pulling this apart and there's metal in it, there's metal that have, has probably went through all the bearings. Um, bearings aren't real expensive and your time is precious. So if you can pull it apart, put all the bearings in it, you only have to do it one time then. That's my recommendation. So check that one out. So now what we'll do is we'll flip it upside down. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and we'll get it started pounding it out the other way, then we'll have to set it on blocks. Um, you'll be able to see this one a little bit better. There you can see the snap rings in there. Um, I'd maybe recommend taking the snap rings out, that way you have a little better surface to hit on. So get your big pair of pliers, squeeze them. Just be careful, because they can fly off of there. Hit you, or go flying and hit somebody else. So, um, there is two of them. That's what you'll be pulling out. Go ahead and set those off to the side. And now we can go ahead and pound that race out the other way. You'll be able to, you'll get it to a point where it's hitting the table. Go ahead and set it on some blocks. The case is a lot lighter now that we got everything out of it. Take a little time just to get your blocks lined up right. That way it's it's pretty stable on there. And once again, just, just uh, alternate back and forth when you're pounding the race out. If you pound on one side, you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting it out. <clears throat> and that race will fall out the bottom side and inspect it, spin it, see if it's smooth. Um, and that is disassembling a 520 drop box. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and clean all your case up, scrape all your silicone off. Um, if you have a washer, a pressure washer, get it cleaned up real well. Um, inspect all your gears, inspect all your teeth, and um, just figure out what you need to fix it. And uh, watch our other video on how to put it back together. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, it's not, uh, not too difficult, but uh, uh, once you have a video to watch, it makes it a lot simpler. So hopefully it was a, a lot of help. If you need anything else, uh, please reach out, leave something in the comments, get a hold of us here at Tillmore. Uh, we'd be glad to help. Thank you.